Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review this week. It's a thriller comedy that came out on July 18, 1990. This is a modest uh, box office success, earning from its $31 million budget by $53.2 million. So it did pretty well. In fact, it even gained some more uh, sales on, on home video, too. And that's the movie, Arachnophobia. Yes, which is a fear of spiders. Eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. And I'm happy to see that Disney finally restored the original movie poster exactly the way we remembered it, where they show the web on top of the branch, a tiny line of a web sling going all the way down into the moon and that's where we spot the spider. Yep, which is actually called an Avondale spider that's based in New Zealand even though this movie is supposed to be set in Venezuela because that's where those spiders are first supposed to be from. This was actually nicknamed as it is a flat huntsman, social huntsman, or at this rate the Linda Cancer Ride. Yeah. You basically find these spiders in Avondale, um, Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah. That's in Australia. It really works very well, too, because um, they look a little bit like, um, which had the big ones, of course, like those tarantulas that we see. But these are the ones that actually kill by sucking their venom and they somehow die within a few seconds yeah and it has a great cast right there I mean you got uh, Jeff Daniels John Goodman Harley Jane Kozak Julian Sands from Warlock and this came out on Blu-ray on 2012 and apparently when this got released it was only released uh, within a month maybe like just two weeks and all of a sudden they spotted the, that the disc actually had a a surprisingly terrible transfer so what happened was um, they, they realized that it got too dark so they decided to um, send out some disc replacements and they wound up getting a better transfer so it was remastered the way the movie was meant to look. So they finally fixed that problem. And I'm glad to see that this is the, the remastered version that I picked up. And I just got this recently at Disney Movie Rewards, as you can see. I'm going to try to block the, the address right here. And <laughs> I didn't have to pay a dime for it because I actually used up all my points when I started getting all these Disney titles. They, they came with a, a Disney Movie Rewards code, so that way you get to use the code on the website and they'll be able to go up to no matter how many points you'll, you'll receive. Like sometimes you'll receive either 100 points, 150, or even 200, maybe even 250 for that matter. And other times you'll get all these mystery points, uh, like any time, like maybe during the, the course of the month or so and I often get that too so that way I can get all these titles I only got a few titles on blu-ray from Disney Movie Rewards in fact I started to do that back in 2016 two years ago when I got two blu-rays uh, one was Bridge of Terabithia and the other one is uh, The Wookiee you know, the one with Dennis Quaid it was a baseball movie that was based on a true story and I also later picked up uh, Meet the Robinsons which was a Blu-ray 3D combo pack it includes the Blu-ray and DVD so I, I don't have a Blu-ray 3D uh, player but I got it just for the Blu-ray so what else <laughs> and I also later got a uh, a Kiro action figure from Big Hero 6 which I just later picked up uh, on Blu-ray just recently as a birthday gift I also got uh, another title too, uh, 
last year, which was uh, Muppets Most Wanted. It's right up there. Uh, well, you can't see it at this point. <laughs> so I ended up getting this. Because in fact, they actually had two options. Uh, one was 900 points. The other one, 960 points, which has the shipping and handling. That goes up to like over two dollars. Yeah. So I went ahead with that. So I had to use up the points for the Big Hero 6 Blu-ray that I picked up. And that's when I finally got it. So I had to wait just a week and a half just to finally receive this on the mail. So now I get to watch this movie in one of the best transfers that ever look for a film that came out 28 years ago. <laughs> well, nearly. Because um, it's not even July 18 yet. <laughs> Okay. Um, unfortunately, the extras was pretty disappointing, though. It only gets just a few on the back, as you can see. So, I wish they had more than that, but what can you do? Considering that this was a modest hit. Um, but, hey, it, it got a cult following over the years, and I'm happy it did, and... And I'm just happy that at least I had a solid transfer that looks so much better than the previous releases. So. And also there is a bit of an error though, because um, on the bottom, which is also um, right here, because it even says it too on this cover, it says 105 minutes. The movie is only, my calculation, an hour and 49 minutes which is uh, 109 minutes. That's how long the film was. So, <laughs> so there's an error right there. <laughs> and Ever After Cinderella Story wasn't the only one that I spotted uh, when I got the DVD. <laughs> but there we go. This was the first production from Hollywood Pictures. Yeah, this was Disney's um, at the t yeah, this was at the time Disney's new subdivision after Touchstone Pictures. So this was going to become more adult oriented in that sort of way, but they still put in some other titles uh, for families and they even put some horror movies and other kind of genres that they got that they could choose from for the studio. So they figured they wanted another sub diary to go for it. Unfortunately the company went dormant in the early 2000s. I mean they only released a few films and then they suddenly got revived in sometime in 2005 with just the release of a few horror films such as Stay Alive, uh, The Invisible, and well, it was a suspense thriller and of course uh, Primeval. And that was it. The, the company officially ended but it still remains uh, under Disney the Vision, and that's when they still use it under the Hollywood Pictures uh, Home Entertainment. So they were still using its, its name just for that, just to release all these titles on Blu-ray. Well, let's get to the movie. Stars Jeff Daniels, John Goodman, Harley Jane Kozak, uh, Julian Sands, uh, Brian McNamara, James Handy, Stuart Packin. Peter Jason, Henry Jones, Francis Bay, uh, Roy Brocksmith, Kathy Kinney. It's written by Don Jacoby along with Wesley Strick, which is based on the story also by Don, and Al Williams, and it's directed by Frank Marshall in his tutorial debut, because he later went on to do films like Alive, which was a drama with Ethan Hawke, and of course the underrated, um, the underrated um, action adventure, Congo. I love that movie, and of course, Eight Below. But he continues to become a longtime producer. He went on to produce other stuff, uh, especially with Steven Spielberg and Kathleen Kennedy. They actually have their own uh, production company too, as well, and they did a lot of stuff. <laughs> and he also helped produce uh, some of the some of the English dub versions of 
of all the the Hayao Miyazaki films, uh, or Studio Ghibli for that matter. So, yep, he helped in hand, right there. The movie began set in the jungles of Venezuela. We meet a, a tomologist, Dr. James Everton, who's played by Julian Sands, who went on the Amazon rainforest in searching for a new set of species, which is insects and arachnids. Yeah, spiders. But they suddenly found a very aggressive one at that. So he's there with a team of experts, including the, the Ben Swayden team, and of course uh, a nature photographer named Jerry Manley, who was just there to take pictures of all the, the nature stuff that they have, like such as a giant web that's like this size, it was amazing. And all these other insects uh, crawling around, they had like tons of creepy crawling insects around in the jungle. Well anyway, they started to use the machine and James decided to use um, that that long chemical that he had to spray around ar around the jungle and suddenly all these uh, insects were flying all the way down from the sky and it was collected um, as samples here and there and that's when they spotted like you know tons of uh, butterflies with different colors of each and they even have um, any other kind of uh, bugs that they have and of course the big spider which looks like a tarantula but quite different in fact even worse because this was a very aggressive one when Jerry Manley uh, decided to take a rest, that's when the spider somehow came into his backpack and then all of a sudden uh, the spider winds up appearing inside his, um, in his sleeping bag and actually bit him by using the two fangs. He actually sucked the venom that went straight into him. He suffers a manic seizure and dies quickly. I mean they thought that it was a fever but turns out that it really wasn't as we expected so because of that um, they took his body all the way back to the United States all the way into his hometown called Kanama, California which they took him straight into a funeral home by using a uh, one of those uh, homemade uh, coffins that they use to take him there and then we begin to reveal the body of him looking like he got sucked up dry you know, like a vampire but the spider suddenly appeared from the box because it went inside and once up uh, going outside you know, scaring off uh, a little kitten and a dog and was picked up by a crow and went all the way into the barn where the crow dies after the spider bit him and it turns out to be the barn of a of the Jenny's family that just came from San Francisco including Dr. Ross Jennings who's played by Jeff Daniels who lives with his wife um, Molly played by Harley Jane Kozak you know, along with his son Tommy and and her daughter, daughter Shelley. So anyway, we soon learn that Ross, along with his son Tommy, has arachnophobia. So that that means they were feared of spiders. Yeah, runs in the family, I guess. Well, then again, I mean, he also explains that um, when he was very young, like at the age of two, because he explained this to his wife Molly that he was terrified ever since when when a house spider actually went straight up to his legs you know, wearing diapers and then it went up to his face so that was like <laughs> no wonder he's so afraid well anyway they they found the, a house spider um, on on the car a yeah, toy car it was one of those uh, remote control cars they um, picked it up and they put it outside and suddenly the 
the big spider only mates with the house spider and yeah, the Venezuelan spider and that's how it started to spread and they actually uh, created a a giant um, egg nest inside the barn on top of it and of course we begin to spot a huge web which Molly actually took a picture of so Ross just works uh, at a local doctor his first patient uh, was with Margaret Hollins whose husband had died but unfortunately she got bitten later on when the spider suddenly came inside her house when she was turning on the lamp sadly so Dr. Metcalf who was played by Henry Jones, yes, Sam Metcalf actually uh, diagnosed her as uh, simply a heart attack yeah which turns out that it really wasn't a heart attack it was a spider bite that actually causes her to to have all the venom being sucked in and kills her really quickly so that's what happened and pretty soon um, she wasn't the only one uh, there was a football player that actually got a spider bite um, from the back of his head um, mostly because it came the spider actually went straight into his helmet uh, of course, uh, Ross came to help to find out what's going on, and then so he actually demand an autopsy to find out what's causing all this. And he, he also found another death that's happening, and it turns out to be, of course, Dr. Sam Melcalf. And yeah, because he's such an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know he's an old man, but this guy is just because he was the one who started this crap. You know, treating him like shit. Um, same goes with Sheriff Lloyd Parsons, played by Stuart Packin. So, there was only three deaths so far. So, he wanted to perform a, an autopsy. So, he, he offered uh, County Coron Coroner Milton Briggs uh, to find out about what's causing all these deaths uh, on the victims. So, that's when Ross actually found out about that. About the spider bites. So, Averton arrived in town along with his colleague, uh, assistant uh, Chris Collins, who's played by Brian McNamara. So, um, he joined in along with an exterminator, Delbert McClintock, who's played by John Goodman, for a, a spider investigation. He yeah, joins in with Lloyd Parsons. So, they're trying to check to see... Um, where the spider has been located around and yeah they even spotted a dead a dead one inside a a check uh, a check cereal box <laughs> so they they also found another one too that was inside the, the dining room so apparently uh, Chris actually captures it by using uh, a wine glass so there we go <laughs> yeah so now we know how terrify uh, yeah, Ross is. So they continue to find the search on all the spiders that are starting to spread around the entire town because that's where it all started. I mean, this is where it killed those victims and now it's starting to go after other victims as well. Yeah, especially uh, the scene where <laughs> where the coach's uh, daughter uh, was taking a shower. and Yeah, I mean, you got to go for that too where the spider son the ghost straight down and and into the drain <laughs> and she screams and <laughs> and horror that was just funny but they, they all team up ju just to find out um, where it all came from and it turns out they all came from the the same barn that Ross had the whole time even though he was actually building a a wine cellar inside to, to only discover that uh, that it was bad wood that cause all this stuff to happen like it's starting to fall apart and he had trouble trying to nail it in because of it I mean he thought it was termites at first for Ross but it wasn't it, it was up to them to to rescue uh, Ross's family out of the the entire house because it was being spread apart filled with all these spiders you know, they're crawling around from the walls 
into the TV where they were playing Family Ties. Yeah, that's where you spot the one spider crawling into <laughs> Alex B. Keaton on screen. And then you see like tons of them actually spreading around into the sink. Uh, everywhere, all around, even in the exterior of the house. I mean, it, all around the room. I mean, th this was insane. I mean, wow. <laughs> I mean, no wonder people can be terrified so much. I mean, when, when they saw the movie, I mean, especially the audience, how they react when they saw being terrified, like all the spiders started to come crawling around <laughs> their bodies, and, like their arms and their legs and everywhere. <laughs> and that's where we get the battle of the deaf here, where, where Ross suddenly fell all the way down from the ledge of the stairs and went all the way down straight into... The basement, you know, where the wine cellar is, and this is where he was trying to find the spider so he could stop it. So that means he can finally get to kill that one spider because I know there were two of them. Yeah, we have the queen and we have the king, and <laughs> so he tries to stop um, one of them, and and it had the, and then there was all the other ones which I know. Um, <laughs> Which I know uh, Delbert actually came and actually sprayed by using all the uh, the toxic uh, chemicals. So he actually sprayed uh, all the baby ones of those spiders, and, and they all burned all the way down to a crisp. But that that was really cool. They used that chemical. And so anyway, he stops him, but actually winds up using the 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 spray can and uses the the flame the tiny flame floor to actually uh, spray all the all the the spider trying to find the spider and and, and spray all all around um, the area to, to actually stop all these spiders trying to go after him uh, but only ends where he actually <laughs> used the nail gun and shoots it and, it, and the spider actually already on fire Went all the way straight into the eggs nest, filled with all the spiders. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So uh, Delbert uh, came to the rescue to save Ross. He got out of there, so they got there safely. And now, I think a couple months later, they finally move uh, back to San Francisco. So now they they have a new apartment. They moved in, and you know they just had some wine together. You know, Ross and Molly until suddenly there was an earthquake <laughs> and it, there you go <laughs> yeah very fun entertaining flick I really enjoyed it um, love the idea that they had to use uh, spiders for this entire um, production for it I mean why not because it just makes it more entertaining I mean it basically builds as a, a comedy with a mix of a thriller, so they, so they even advertise it as a film of the, yeah, I know, kind of a weird name to call it, a film of the, so that's why they had to use the acronym for thriller and comedy, all combined. But uh, Frank Maestro did a great job directing this movie, and he definitely knows what he's doing. You know, considering he was a longtime producer with Steven Spielberg which he also produced the film as well with Kathleen Kennedy. So they definitely know how to team up to make a very interesting, um, entertaining uh, thriller, but with comedy elements in there. So, so it's kind of like all these other films that we often see. And I know there's been B-movies uh, like Kingdom of the Spiders, and which, interesting enough, the producer of that actually uh, criticized it by saying that um, this movie was a copy, but but it'll be tough to st to sue uh, Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Well, then again, th this was a better film than Kingdom of the Spiders. That's all I could say. But but even Kingdom of the Spiders was an enjoyable uh, B movie in a way. But I'll take this movie. <laughs> uh, Jeff Daniels did a great job uh, portraying Bane the Doctor. He's also a Family Man. Uh, Ross Jennings. I mean, we definitely feel his uh, fear of, of spiders, so I can understand, because everyone has arachnophobia these days, 
You know, most people have that particular feel. Uh, they're afraid that the spider will crawl around and wind up landing on your shoulder, your head, your face, <laughs> your legs. I mean, I know it's like <laughs> those creepy crawlers, man, that you just couldn't handle. But they're often very harmless, though. I mean, they're not... Uh, I mean, I know sometimes you'll get a spider bite, which I know that sucks to get that. But as long as it doesn't doesn't affect the humans very well, like they they suffer a disease that that would affect them, because that'd be really scary. <laughs> That's always the case. But of course, um, they even use tarantulas as uh, pets as well. So of course, they they even try to. Um, they try to cut down the the fangs so they they won't bite, won't affect everyone. So, there you go. But I can see why people are afraid of spiders because they really affect you. <laughs> anyway, um, interesting cast too. Julian Sands um, coming from Warlock. I thought he did a great job playing the, a professor um, who's an expert on finding some new species here and there. So this is different for him. Uh, John Goodman totally stole the show as the exterminator, Delbert, and no doubt about it, having to see this movie, it's always fun to see John Goodman always play uh, a, a particular role that you'll just never forget. I mean, this is definitely his finest role to date, uh, long before he went on to play Walter in uh, The Big Lebowski, but this was his best one too. I mean, I, I like the scenes where <laughs> he actually spotted the spider and he wants to uh, spraying the chemical on it, uh, started spraying it twice, and then later he steps on it. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh wow. It, it was like a giant step and, and all that sticky uh, goo from the spider came off. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, I, I also love his uh, his humor, and and also I, I love the moment where you know, he was getting ready to to kill all these spiders, and he says, "Rock and roll," puts on the mask, and he, and he just went in there and and killed all the spiders that's spreading around the entire house and the barn. <laughs> and of course, uh, Ross also became the hero too by by killing that giant spider that was. I was going after him. It was like, whoa. Very intense, too. Which, by the way, the, the effects that they used for the two spiders was actually done animatronically by um, Chris Wallace's team. Yep, Chris Wallace, the same guy who did uh, the Fly remake from 1986. He also directed The Fly 2, which also helped this, uh, this team to actually create those effects. He did a very good job. I love the shots of the spiders, you know, having to crawl up on you. I mean, they show a, a interesting close-up of it on screen. That makes it so creepy. It actually terrifies people. I mean, and they even show the close-up of the, the free eyes. Wow. Just perfect right there. And how it moves really fast, too. I mean, it does move a little slowly, but then it moves a, at, at a different speed. <laughs> It even flies around. I mean, once they they shoot the web slings here, and and the fact that they crawl around, they they fly around. It's like wow. <laughs> I love that too. It's just so amazing. I mean, the way they did those effects um, towards the end of the movie just really works. Anyway, it was um, it was really awesome. I really love this movie. I'm glad I watched it. Um, it was great to watch it again after all these years because um, I saw this as a kid and I remember being creeped out a bit mostly because of the you know the way the spiders look and the way those those babies once started to spread around. I mean this was amazing. And they also used the sound effects by adding some mustard packs and <laughs> And some squashed potato chips to create those the, those uh, squashed uh, sounds and the way they look too. Yeah. 
fun. <laughs> in fact, um, if you think of it this way, I, this was sort of like Jaws, uh, you know, when, when people are afraid of sharks, that's why they hardly get near the, uh, the ocean these days. Well, spiders is the most terrifying of them all because they're afraid that they're going to come right straight into your home. So that's always the case. I can understand that. Yeah. Um, it has a wonderful score that's done by Trevor Jones. I mean, he definitely gave it a creepy vibe uh, once you see those creepy crawlers coming around. And also, had a lot of great songs that they join in that actually is spider related too, especially uh, the song Don't Bug Me by Jimmy Buffett, Caught in Your Web, Swear to Your Heart by Russell Hitchcock, Spider and the Fly by The Poor Boys, uh, <laughs> Boris the Spider by Pleasure Thieves, I mean, Jesus Christ, <laughs> they're all related to this, this interesting movie right there. <laughs> I love that. Um, but great cast, without a doubt. Um, I'm glad that it became a modest success. And it's great to see that Frank Marshall directed this and with Spielberg and, and Kennedy uh, teaming up. And it was great that this was their first production for Hollywood Pictures, a subdivision of Disney. Uh, I wish the studio had came back to, to release some more movies. But it seems like that's not going to happen, sadly. So that's a shame. Um, they were a great company. But what can we do? So anyway, that's Arachnophobia. And I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.